Hello guys, what's up? This is Sharon talking. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about the update and all the things that we received, like this special banner right now, call it Romancing Festival and Media. This banner was released recently on Japan, like two weeks ago, so we need to discuss something. Global is around 10 months before Japan, and when we receive a banner that's Recent in Japan, the result is getting overpowered styles that can be used for a lot of time. This is like one of the best banners the game has ever had. In my opinion, it's the best one. And we have a lot of different utilities here. Also, the return of blunt damage with gunners and martial artists, especially Liza with the martial artists skill. Not only this banner, we also received another one with the global exclusive character being red. I'll be discussing both uh, banners and also a lot of other stuff. One important thing is that this banner has five SS styles, so there's no chance of an off banner. When you zoom in here and you see an animation of an SS, it means that you will be getting a new style, for sure. So you can even zoom in sometimes, get some of your characters, and when you see that you only have two left, and it's not a high chance of getting a new one, you can stop if you want. I went and got all five new styles because they are pretty unique and strong in their own ways. I'll be clicking here on some of the details so we can check something, starting with the media. The media has uh, both AoE and single target builds. The first attack is a very cheap AoE attack with D power, can be reduced to 4, uh, but there are some problems with this attack. We have to open with another AoE, that's Ricochet Parade. This one is B power, 12 BP, can be reduced to 9. Very powerful by itself, because it's B, in I only 9 you can open. But there's a problem, you cannot use Total Shot two times in a row, because uh, she f doesn't have enough BP. You use 17 instead of 16, but she has a passive that also gets BP when she kills targets. So if she kills targets with Ricochet Parade or Total Shot, she will be able to use another one. So you have to think well about this, uh, because there's no other way to do this without killing a target. But you can also start with Bullet Dance, this attack here, because it's a random attack. She attacks three times in a row, always three times, there's no RNG involved. And the good thing, this is incredibly strong because uh, it's comparable to the best SS attacks we have, getting very close to triple S damage output right now with an uh, SS weapon and not even rank 30 yet. She's dealing like 45,000 damage against an enemy that's weak to blunt. I think that's pretty high. If you are using her on a 50% increase lot, like Ring Rangers or Deadly Pierce, uh, yeah, the damage is pretty good. Very close to uh, some Max it double S power with only 7 BP cost, not 10 or 9 or 8. 7 is pretty good. Uh, then we have to talk about her passives, and then we have um, Dex. Well, she gets 20% increase in Dex rate on the start of a round. And that's pretty good because Bullet Dance is a weak attack by itself. It's 3 weak shots, and getting more Dex helps more than getting more overall damage output. And fired up 5 increases overall damage output by 20%, so dex buff, bonus buff, and she gets even stronger if you have Barbara, because she only has 20 by herself, meaning that 50% increase means uh, 50 plus 20 plus 15 from her stones. So 35, 85% increasing damage. Then the second path is the one that increases her BP when she kills a target and also recovers HP. Uh, every time, doesn't need to kill a target, but this one only heals for around 80s, 90s, it is not a good heal. I don't know, maybe in boss fights it will help if you are just using Bullet Dance for boss. It's not that bad, she can be used for AoE and single target cycles, although she's uh, not perfect, she's, she needs to trigger her passive. Yeah, so now let's uh, talk about the other character that we have, this is Zany. Zany is comparable to um, Ocelus, we even have Ocelus here. She has an attack that's free, and it's incredible, it's Slash and Pierce. Dual Trust is an A attack, well, the power is not so high, but it's free. It's free, it's better than normal. She also has a Pierce, she also counters with this attack, we'll be talking about the counter itself. And uh, the second attack is Monsoon Slash, this is an upgradable skill that started with very old characters, that has fast, it's a fast attack, single foe, as you can see here, it's plus, meaning that it's an evolved version of the attack. We cannot even upgrade this anymore because it's already evolved, and uh, it's A power, it's like Heaven on Earth without stun, but even a little more damage than that. And the last one is Slash Rondo, uh, I think this is unique to her, and it's an attack that has a buff. Yeah, she buffs her own agility by medium effect, it's good. Uh, it can be, I think it's uh, 
25% increase or 40% increase. And she also enters a town stance, meaning that she will be attacked more often than not. She should be used in the front line of a Dragon Strike formation or Tiger Shark. She tries to increase her um, speed, her agility to very high levels so she can evade attacks. I don't know if she is so reliable with evade and maybe you will not even use Slash Rondo all the time. You can get Flash Triple Trust from her SS Farmable style in story mode. The same attack that Acelus uses and just stick with just the first and second one instead of going for Slash Rondo. It's an option that you can do. Then let's check for her passives and the first one she uh, has a chance of countering and evading a direct attack. She will attack with the first attack called Dual Trust. But because it, the rank is only one, the damage won't be so high, but it will be at least okay. Then the second one is called a Bebop. When she lands an attack, she has a very high chance to increase on agility and have herself enter a town stance. So she keeps increasing the chance of being attacked and agility. She is an off tank that is evasive. She doesn't have a high endurance, but if she keeps increasing agility, she will just evade attacks. That can be interesting, but we have to understand that evasion works more if you can decrease the accuracy of your enemy. Usually, mages are easy to debuff because they depend on agility, but other enemies depend on dex. It, we don't have a reliable dex uh, debuffer, but we will have matriarch in the future that can buff our own agility very fast instead of just Narwhal's daughter that keeps uh, buffing only once every two or three turns. Matriarch can do that every new turn, meaning that only your agility is enough to evade without having to worry about your enemy. And then she has fired up 5 20% increase at all times, so very comparable to Asus that has only one damage passive instead of just uh, having a chance to evade all types of attacks, she has a higher chance to evade, but only direct attacks and counter instead of just all types. You know, it's something that you trade for another. And uh, she, uh, instead of healing, she gets more agility. Yeah, this is what she has. She's a little more stronger than Perfector Ocelus. Not much more, but uh, at least she has a free attack instead of just charging. Ocelus kind of clashes with Narwhal's daughter, so any can be better on these situations. The status of multipliers are pretty similar as well. Then we have Liza, and Liza has um, the return of martial arts because she has very powerful attacks. Giant Swing is an A power attack with only 5 EP codes, we can use this 3 times in a row. She has a chance to inflict an insta Q, but has a delay, so it may be useful here and there, but not all the time. The good thing is that because it has delay, she would never attack before the other characters, meaning if you want her to use Bebel Chromo or Sky Twister, very powerful attack, she will just save if you can finish the waves with other characters. Remember, she will be the fifth character to attack. Maybe four characters is enough, and then she can just use Babel Crumble or Sky Twister on the second or third wave. She can open with Babel Crumble because uh, this attack can be reduced to 11, and she gets 11 on the start of a fight because of passives. Meaning that she can also inflict a stun. Yeah, very high, her intelligence not that bad, she can even inflict stun. And Babel Crumble is an opener for turn 1, and then if you can wait to turn 2, she can use Sky Twister, and Sky Twister is the highest possible attack for Blunt until we see Rofus, but Rofus has a different way to do Blunt damage. She is the best poor Blunt damage attacker in the game right now. Babel Crumble is also pretty powerful already because it's 3S power, 3S power and 4S power, <laughs> a very uh, strong specialist for a single target. Yeah, but if she does not use this, she will just keep using normal attack and that's not that good, but a very strong opener and a boss killer. And even for farming, if you want a character that can do damage, um, in situations where you have only one enemy. Uh, then we have weak point focus 4, increase the damage against weak attacks. Then uh, martial arts is proneness, uh, increases even more damage when equipped with martial arts. And then even more damage, 15% increase in damage and recover uh, 1 BP. Now if we compare, the first passive is 20% increase in damage and then 30 with the other two. We have a character that have 30% on all times and 15% when attacking a weak target. That increases her damage to insane levels with Sky Twister and Mabel Crumble. It takes time to get this to level 99, but once you get, the damage will be pretty massive. Then there is Rofus, and this guy here is incredible because of a lot of things. He is a, a gun user that has slash damage. His attack here is a slash damage. He even uses his word, but you only need to equip him with a gun. It's seen power 2 VP coast, very nice because he can slowly build up for more BP. But you may even ignore the first and second skill because of his better build. 
Yeah, the second list of machine gun, we already saw this with Fuse. It's an AoE attack, very powerful because it's C, C, 6 VP. Uh, he can only use this twice in a three turn cycle, then he will have to just stick to Probing Slash up till he receives enough BP to use it again. But then he has Gun and Blade, and this skill is broken. It's extremely broken, and I will tell you why. You cannot even see it here, you have to run a stage. It's a double S attack with blunt damage. It's not so high. We know that Liza can keep uh, doing way more damage than him, and with any of her skills, she just does more damage. But then, he will just use this attack called Ancito, and it's a 4S damage, single target, but just slash. It's still based on gun, because you just can equip guns with him, and you even get one more BP. So what happens is you get 3 times of Paralyze when he unleashes Ancito. Right now, I'm dealing like 92,000 damage with this guy against the boss on this event stage. It's extremely powerful, he is the top damage dealer in the game right now and cannot compare to anything. He's way beyond the top, but he lacks um, utility after he uses. He will just stick with power lies for 3 turns. But I don't think it's a problem because he will just be using normal attacks. You can cleanse this power lies if you want to use Pogins' White Rose or any other cleanser, but I don't even think you should care about this. Just wait for him to return and use another attack. Very powerful, the best attacker in the game. Uh, let's talk about the passives. He increases dex for all surviving allies on the start of a round, so good for farming, good for boss fights, but only for turn 1. Then he has overtension, 15% increase in damage at all times, just like fired up 4, but also 15% increase more for combo and 15% increase more uh, for overdrive. Yeah. Fired up that increases uh, 20%. Yeah, 10%. And then uh, 15 in all times. So 35 in all times, and then sometimes more and more because of the combos. And he will do very high damage when he does combo because of, you know, attacking twice. He doesn't have the bug that Fuse had because it's fixed now, so that's a pretty good thing. Also, because he increased the damage of everyone, he will just make farming easier because of Submachine Gun. If you really need to use AoE, uh, you can even use a media with him and, well, they both will shine. You can even use T260G alongside them in a Deadly Pierce formation, that should be incredible. Then we have Ren. Ren is an uh, incredible style because he has Mirage Kick, this attack here is unique to him. And it's an AoE attack with STR debuff. We don't have this, he's unique, he only has this, it's just like a different uh, thing comparable to Acelus, and increases much of his value, because he's a tank, but not an easy tank, he's not better than Julian, we cannot say that. He's a martial artist that can uh, tank and attack, doesn't have any damage passive, but uh, Triple Dragon is not a bad attack at all, can be used twice in a 3 turn cycle if you want him for damage, he's just comparable to Feyon, this attack can also be sawn in, in Feyon. Then we have Ward Rest, and this is an AoE attack, I don't think this has had much volley because he doesn't have damage passives, even through his B, um, he even enters a stealth chance, and why would a tank uh, enter a stealth chance? I don't know why, but I think some people justify it by uh, he not being target all times because he's more of a cover tank. Uh, like here, you can see the Guardian has a chance to cover for enemy that's being attacked. It's just like Julian, but he has lower chance. I think Julian has 40. Then Silent Hunter, and he gets a stealth chance on the start of a turn. It's not a start of a round, so every new turn, and he recovers HP. The HP is just like in median, around 100 or a little less. And then Iron Wall Defense, 30% reduction in damage. This is the same thing that Julian has. So Julian can be better because he can use Guard Up. And he decreases the damage even more. But if you're using Naral's Daughter, the buff that Julian uses clashes. So Ren may be useful for those that use Naral's Daughter and want a debuffer and tank on the same time. But as you can see, he does not increase the chance of being attacked. He actually reduces it. So sometimes it may not be the best thing. If you're using Tiger Shock, it may not be so good. Okay, so this is for all the styles. And then there is another one that is a global one and it's red. We were not expecting red, I think that he was uh, appearing oops, in some of the banner images before the update, and I was thinking why would they be using red, and then well, let's see, we have a globe exclusive red, and he's nicking a lot of things, like the first attack increases his agility, we all know that agility is incredible because it increases damage for martial artists, the evasion rate, and also in the future when we use Matriarch, he will get even better evasion. 
Then uh, uh, we have Punishing Fist. This is a just like Punishing Palm. I even say multiplier, I think. But with a lower cost, he can reduce this to 6. Punishing Palm is 9. As you can see, way better. And he starts with 12 BP, meaning that he can use this 3 times in a row. Another AoE farmer. But usually better to be using Happy String Formations or a Speculation. Very good attack, Ethley. Very, very good. Then the last one is Punishing Combo, and this one is incredible because it has something unique, only designed for himself. He attacks with this attack that's pretty similar to Punishing Palm, and it's a beat attack, 15 BP cost, so 12 when you, once you full awaken. And then he attacks twice with Key Blast, the same Key Blast that we saw with a lot of different martial artists, but two free Key Blasts to kill that enemy that has higher HP. Maybe you are using him for AoE farming, and he attacks a wave with lots of enemies, but there's one that is a boss, or has higher HP. You just try to finish that enemy with Key Blast. And we also have to think that it's just very close to a triple S damage on the same time, because it's three attacks. Imagine three attacks combining themselves uh, means that he can nuke for single targets as well. So, good for AoE, good for single targets, and uh, you can even just stick to Punishing Fist if you think that Punishing Combo is too much. The problem is just that after using this for the first turn, you have to wait 4 turns to use this again. But the good thing is that when he uses this Punishing Combo, he triggers Overdrive on turn 1. Yeah, the problem is that he will be there by himself and that doesn't mean that he will get the max bonuses from damage and after using this, what should you be using after that? You will only be able to use Hummingbird in Overdrive and that doesn't mean that you get a lot of damage. A very interesting design, but in style details we can see that Power Charge 2 increases his VP by 2 on the start of a battle. Then there is this one that increases damage when attacking with martial arts, so 15% increase in damage, and then overtension increases it by 15, and then plus 15 on combo, and plus 15 on overdrive. So when he uses overdrive, he will get a lot of damage by itself, even if he's using this alone. So it's incredible, but on the same time, wish he could use another thing. Maybe you can just uh, save your VP to you hit close to 20, and then you use one punishing combo and wait to use another one. And every time that you use one, you just get another overdrive. Yeah. Then... <laughs> Wish he had another uh, attack with 10 BP. Maybe in the future, Red. Maybe in the future. But this is an incredible skill that will be passed after every new version of Red for a long time. And then, for that, that's that. We don't have anything else. I uh, give a look on all the styles. I will not be giving a look on all of the uh, status multipliers because I know it's impossible to do that right now. There's many characters and people want to summon. Uh, let's get back to the summon page and I will say that. The first banner is incredible, it's the highest value we had so far, there's five different styles, there's no off banner, meaning that you will get at least one of them when you see a SS animation. Uh, if you don't have the characters from the second banner, it's also a very good banner to summon for, because there's more medals, meaning that you don't need to do uh, 15 pulls, you can do less, I think like 12 or something, and you can guarantee one style. Rouge and Blue may not be as powerful as these characters here, but they are still on the top of their games. They have AoE and single target cycles. They they have very high multipliers for damage. They still uh, don't have triple S or 4S damage, but they are useful. And Fuse is a good instant killer for area of attack. So then we have all the different styles. And in my opinion, stick to the first banner if you are a newcomer, um, because these styles will live forever, I mean, not forever, but at least for a whole year. You'll still be using them, even if they get replaced by a little more damage here and there. And then, if you are someone that don't have all these styles from the second banner, summon because you have volume blue and rouge. Uh, hopefully you have at least 60,000 gems in this banner, you use a lot. But then the game will give us a lot of free gems, like always, and if you have enough gems, sumo here. Okay, so now I'll be talking about there's other stuff like this new missions, daily missions. There are many summon tickets. There will be more on the second and third day. Then 2,000 gems to get from here. Don't forget to do this, man. And then we will have uh, some new event called Battle with Joker. I will show you uh, my setup here and you will see five of the new styles being used together. There's only ran out of this fight because I'm not training him yet. You can only use five. There's six new styles. I got them now in my live streams. And the strongest one is Rofas. Like I said, he's broken. He's just dealing like 90,000 damage with a NAS weapon. I'm not even using a double S weapon. There's only a double S weapon in my immediate. 
Um, <laughs> we got a combo. You see much damage here. I think like 100,000. You see, two key blasts after the attack. Gun and Blade, 51,000. And then 63,000. That was a combo, of course. More damage. But still very high. We didn't even get the chance to see immediate attacking, so that's it. You can use these styles here. There are many styles that are featured in the next event. And I'll be showing you here. They are all uh, from Saga Frontier 1. Yeah, we are celebrating Saga Frontier 1 remaster release, and that's why the developers made this. Let's click here on limited time ability, and you will see that uh, Battle with Joker brings four times attributes for all the featured styles and three times attributes for all the older styles that are not featured but belongs to Saga Frontier. And here we can farm even more status than the current story mode. We can click here on the tails. They say uh, 1170s but it's 1180s. It's the high get cap right now so just focus here. There is also very good things like this double S weapon to farm and many other stuff like books, uh, gold pieces, pieces from the new styles, uh, a new weapon that also drops on the event, and a lot of other stuff, like bucks. Man, I really love bucks. So what you can do is just run stage number 20, just find like I uh, showed you. I'll be making another videos later. Uh, and also farm this blaster gun, it's better than all the guns we had in the past. A uh, very nice thing, and I claim a lot of stuff here already, so you guys will see only a portion of the things that you can get. And also, don't purchase the gun from the shop because it drops with... Um, no uh, elemental bonus or any status bonus. Okay, so this is the only event that's new, but there's a lot of good things to talk on the new section because they released a lot of uh, information about future stuff. Let's pause here. Oh yeah, so now we are here on the new section of the game and there's a letter of the producer. Guys, we need to thank because Mashanori Ishikawa is a god. <laughs> the guy himself gave us a lot of good things that you have to check your gift box. There's 400 gold pieces, there's a lot of gems, a lot of rewards, bucks as well. And without him, we not even have Saga from Shiri Master. I'm a huge fan of this guy. Hey, I'm here. And then let's click here on Joker Advent Celebrations on the way. Yeah, we have uh, given a look on all of this. There's also a new uh, skill that can be amplified that was added, the Monsoon Slash that comes with any. It's a good uh, upgrade, but I'll be talking about this in another occasion. By clicking here, we see everything that's new, like the banners we already discussed in. And there's a dual sale for those that want to summon for the premium uh, step-ups. They are not bad at all. Then we have the missions. And there is this Joker's Advent Quest. Please, is for your favorites every day. I'll be uh, giving a look there. We have to do this before the daily reset. The event itself, then we get double attempts on Monster Training Cave. You can learn new skills here. And also, don't use the currency from here because we will receive a new update where we can get new SS styles there. And four times for big treasure hunt. This is not <laughs> that important, but we have another event for Hidden Dojo, and that's something that we still have to get a lot. But you can only purchase 10 medals every new week, and it's a problem. So, let's return to the game. Yeah, now one last thing. Uh, we can go to the daily, and then there is this Joker event quest. Uh, just run the stage with the styles that you want more pieces, because it gives Bazan on the characters that you're using. Maybe you want more pieces for the, these characters here, I already have Rufus Maxed, so I have to remove him from here, and that should be good, because we have like 20 days, 21 days of free pieces. That allows us to limit break our characters faster. So, uh, is it worth so many on these banners? Like I said, uh, this banner is incredible. I must assure you that so many here will not be a waste, but then I believe they will release another banner in the next week. And this another banner will be related to Saga Frontier again, because they also had a second banner in Japan. This another banner may not be as interesting as this one, but if you want to check if they do some different buffs to the characters or not, you can wait. And then uh, for the other banner, well, not so much if you already have all the characters. It's more about if you value red as a character or not. Also, another thing that I forgot to say is that because he attacks three times, if you get someone else to all people combo, it will count like four attacks, so he gets even more damage. It's incredible how versatile Red is. Red is better for AoE, and then Eliza is just a single target specialist, but at least he has AoE options uh, as a martial artist. But then if you get a Media and Rufus on this banner, you really don't need to go for Red. There's a lot of blunt damage dealers on this banner already. 
And also depends on how many gems you have. If you will have only around 40s or 50s pokers on this banner, and if you're looking not to get all the characters fast, and you have more than 60,000, if you want red, you can summon, but, well, it's kind of an overkill, and you really don't need to just get all the new styles. I got because, well, I want to make videos about it, but it's not that important. So, uh, and if you want to summon on this banner, my uh, idea of the best ones is Rofus first, then Liza, then Emilia, then Annie and Ren uh, tied. Maybe any more than Ren, especially if you have Juden. But Ren AoE STR debuff will be used for, for forever, maybe. While Any may be outclassed. Uh, she's a damage dealer and not so good as a tank. While Emilia has a very interesting setup with her second skill, very high damage output. So while most nukers need at least three turns to attack again, Emilia can do it with 7 BP. Sometimes only two turns will be needed so that she can unleash her damage. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Sorry for seeing everything in a fast speed, but there's so much to talk about that I don't even know where to start. <laughs> so if you want to support the channel, please use the link on the description. I am saying that... Uh, from the next month beyond, I will just stay with YouTube, it will be my main resources, because I want to just uh, release content for this game and focus on this. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe if you haven't, we see each other on the next one. Bye.